After Infosys, it's time for India. Nandan Nilakani, one of the co-founders of India's second largest IT company, is a man with a mission. And that's to galvanize everybody to achieve the potential of India. In his recently published book, Imagining India, Nilakani outlines the ideas that he thinks will make it happen. Today, he's our guest on Beautiful People. Nandan Nilakani, it's good to have you on the show. And Thank you. you know, today I think we're going to speak to you more in your role as author of this book, Imagining India, and perhaps a little less as co-chairman and co-founder of Infosys. Sure. The first question is that you know, when people like you, and by extension, people like us, um, become successful, there is this staring desire not to engage or bring down engagement with government and with the public administration around us to a minimal. You seem to be doing the opposite. Where is this motivation coming from? India is at this very unique uh, position. It's a chance which comes for a nation just once in a millennium. And we are lucky to be mm -hmm. here at this critical juncture. And, you know, I, I have been successful in, you know, my career way beyond what I ever thought I would be. So I think it's time for me to give back. Both my father and my uncle were very pro-public service types. Mm. They used to go out and do things. And maybe I got influenced by that and I'm, I'm sort of replaying that now. Mm. You have over the years worked on, let's say, the National Knowledge Commission, the Urban Renewal Mission, the Bangalore Agenda Task Force. There are innumerable committees, government yeah. um, you know, bodies that, where you have come in as a volunteer consultant. What is it in this experience, what is it over the years that you've seen that makes you feel optimistic about the engagement? Because uh, I'm sure that there is optimism under, oh underlining yeah, very this. very much. You know, there are many examples of where I've engaged and where at the beginning it didn't seem very promising. Like? But, uh, like urban reforms. When I began looking at urban issues, it was not a very hot mm -hmm. topic. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I learned a lot uh, uh, the five years I did the Bangalore Agenda Task mm -hmm. Force. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that experience became useful when we helped in shaping the policies for the mm -hmm. Urban Renewal Mission, mm -hmm. which ultimately turned out to be a, a 50,000 crore program. Mm -hmm. One of the things you mentioned in the book is that you increasingly see a bottom-up participation of the middle class. You know, the, everybody, including, yeah, the poor, in, yeah. including the poor, you're saying, in civil society. I think the phrase you've used is that this will help deepen uh, democracy. Now, the question is that, uh, you know, in uh, November, after the uh, terrorist attacks, we saw this massive, uh, spontaneous protest led by the youth. Is this an example of what you absolutely, were trying to absolutely. outline? Absolutely. I think the terrible events of Mumbai on 26 11, mm -hmm. I think, showed people very clearly that they cannot live in an island, that they are part of an interdependent world. And, you know, it's not just about going to work, making money, going home, watching TV. It's really, that ultimately, if we don't take an interest in making a society more secure, more fair, more inclusive, better governed, then we are going to be the losers. So I think that was a very stark uh, message. And it's very heartening to see uh, people uh, taking it very seriously. The kind of violent agitation we saw in West Bengal, um, in Nandigram and Shingu reacting to the um, and, and Tata's nano plant. And then we saw the protest against SEZs in cer certain states. In Goa, you saw three SEZs getting denotified. Is that also, would you say, people power and people engaging with their circumstances or is that political No, no, I think some of it is outlet. definitely people power. Some of it has been used for political purposes. So we have to sort of say, separate the two out. Mm. But in general, I think the Indian citizen is getting more awakened. Mm. He is more concerned about his rights. He is more willing to stand up for uh, what he sees as being mm. an unfair thing. And I think that's a very healthy thing because mm. ultimately that's the only way we can force the system mm. to become a fairer system. When it came to West Bengal specifically, where, how would you interpret what happened? Well, there? I, I, there I feel they should have had a negotiated settlement mm. because I think uh, uh, by essentially getting the Tatas to move out, I think that West Bengal lost out on that because mm. I believe uh, Mr. Tata had really you know, great intentions of mm. using that factory to drive... Uh, you know, industrial growth in West Bengal and even the chief minister had great intentions. So there I think a negotiated settlement along the lines that the governor had tried to mm. put together. Mm. There I feel it was a mistake to let it, uh, you know. So you don't think it, see that particular incident as a victory for people power? You see that rather as a loss for Yeah, people. because I think people power should be used to raise consciousness mm. 
but if you don't negotiate a settlement mm. then everybody is a loser mm. so i think the challenge for leaders of people movements mm. is to understand they also have a role to find solutions it's mm. not just about taking a position and and saying no mm. because i think people in this country are hungry for solutions and they're willing to give a listen to anyone but if they stop offering solutions and only offer criticisms mm. then they're going to lose their voice uh recently at the vibrant good uh, gujarat conference you had uh, business um, uh, business leaders like anil ambani and sunil mittal endorse in a sense uh, narendra modi as uh, you know as the ideal or a good candidate for prime minister of india now you in your book have outlined what you call the vertical um, you know the divides. vertical divides so caste religion region compulsions of that kind horizontal aspirations being good governance development etc how would you react if i said that businessmen would obviously look at the horizontal aspirations and judge people through that filter because it suits them it, like in the case of uh, mr narendra modi no, i think you know we, whereas uh, the vertical divides would cannot be swept away just because the uh, aspirations are being met no, i think that's a very good point and uh, it's true that uh business like businesses like governor governments which are quick which are decisive which mm. are free of corruption which are uh, industry friendly in terms of mm. creating and certainly i think uh, gujarat is doing that so mm. that's perhaps the reason why mm. he gets so much accolades from mm. uh, from uh, from business leaders and others but i agree with you that that's not enough i mean clearly we also have to create a fair and just society where all citizens mm. no matter what caste what religion feel that uh, they are safe and secure and equal in the eyes of the mm. state and to that extent i think uh, there is the question mark about the the riots of 2002 so i think we have to navigate this very carefully mm. my real point was that as long as you have these vertical divides mm. politicians will try to exploit these divides because mm. that's the way they'll get an electoral advantage mm. Mm. but if we as people say look you cannot use those divides against us we rather you tell us what you're going to do for us in a positive way then they will stop dividing us mm. therefore divides come because it suits a uh, political purpose but when divides exist would you believe that horizontal aspirations will you know paper over those divides no they will not paper over because i think it's not automatic mm. uh, it's not that a richer society will be more unified or something or harmonious or more harmonious so uh, you certainly have to work on the mm. harmonization too mm. and and All I'm saying is that the less you have less political capital you get by being divisive mm. the less likely you're going to do it that's all mm.